Welcome back. Let's take a look at our quiz question from last time's games. So each time that we've played a game that I guess gets analyzed by Shogi Wars, uh, the server, or sometimes maybe the opponent, I'm not sure, we'll take a look at the games. And once they're analyzed, um, then sometimes we get quiz questions about points in the game where I could have done something significantly better than the move I actually played. So, I forget if this was game one, two, or three from last time. Perhaps you remember. So the question is, do we play bishop drop at 1-6, blocking the lance, or do we play a 7-4 pawn drop? Do you remember? I mean, this wasn't in the video, but... Um, yeah. I think there are countermeasures against this bishop drop. They, if they had to, they could move the gold up to defend this. They might not even have to do that. Uh, I thought this is aggressive because it aims directly at the king. This pawn drop striking slightly further away from the king looks more interesting to me. So I think that's the correct answer. I don't remember the full continuation here. So I attack the knight. Oh, the knight runs. Okay. And then so... I'm moving my silver up. Silvers do like to move up the board. Um, despite not being able to retreat as well as they advance, they tend to be good offensive pieces in general. Uh, so here the opponent could drop this pawn, and then this bishop drop has opened up thanks to this supporting pawn here. And whether or not the opponent takes it with the gold or not, that doesn't really matter. So, oh, and if they don't take the gold, uh, there is still something here. So you can build up a strong attack on the left side of the board, since the attack on the right side of the board is kind of dying down. In the actual game, I played this bishop drop, however... Uh, oh, I think we both missed this move. Yeah, this would be a convincing way to shut down my bishop, and then trap it from the front. Not unlike how I did that to a different opponent, I don't think it was the same opponent here, but yeah, here this just loses a bishop. So that's our fun little warm-up before we start playing today. We're going to play 10-minute games as we normally do and continue hoping um, that you know we're going to get a held of how to play this static rook strategy. So there's some particular castles um, and attacks and defenses that work best with this strategy. Um, so one thing we're going to try to do this time is play a proper move order by moving our silver on the right, left hand side of the board first. So we'll see how this goes. Um, apparently 90% of shogi games open with open. Good luck. Apparently 90% open with this first move. So this is a reasonable first move. And then you don't want to hang the bishop right away. That would be terrible. Um, so I'll, as an alternative to that, you can push this rook pawn and pursue this bishop here. And often the opponent will decline this bishop exchange. And then if you are so interested in playing the fortress castle... Um, well, first we're going to take advantage of forcing the opponent to move the bishop up to defend against this rook pawn. But very soon thereafter, you can play this silver up. And this builds the fortress. Um, so that's if you really want to play the fortress castle, you can do it that way. I think this is a reasonable play here. I lately have been playing this silver up first. I don't know if moving this silver first or the other silver first. I don't remember what you're supposed to do. Perhaps I should be more acquainted with how that works. Um, okay, we're going to put a file between my rook and my silver here. And yeah, I'm a bit confused as to what's going on. I'm not going to lie. <sighs> um... So we'll take some space in the center, take the 5-5 five, five square, 
opponent also takes that square. Um, I think we put pressure on the bishop this way as well. This also threatens to bring this silver out to the right. Um, so, yeah, we'll see to what extent I'm playing this accurately. Um, our opponent is building a... Oh, they've already dropped their bishop back. Which, in theory, means as soon as this diagonal opens up, I'm positioned well to attack there. Um, it also means they're building an attack on this front right now. So it would be a good time for me to do something. Uh, actually, oh, I should have brought my bishop back so I could have pushed this pawn right here right now. Maybe I should still push it. It puts me at a pawn deficit to do that. But later this pawn gets much harder to push. Um, I don't know. My king is rather exposed, so I'm not comfortable pushing this. But maybe I should be pushing it anyway. Um, let's put our king to safety. All right, that's a bit aggressive, I would say. I'm going to plug this diagonal, perhaps against my better judgment. Uh, but this allows me to attack the bishop, or prevent it from getting here entirely. Hmm. Let's activate the bishop this way. Oh my. Do we have time for this? This is interesting. There's so many things going on in this position. Uh, shnikes. Wait, if I move that, there become more squares a bishop can drop if I were to exchange bishops. Here the bishop can only drop there. That's a good square for a bishop to drop, however. Um, I am perplexed. All right, we're going to activate our bishop here. I debated pushing this pawn first, but that seemed unnecessary in this circumstance. Um, our opponent is super convinced that they can break through over there, and I don't know why. They have resistance against me hitting this point. I don't think they have that same sort of resistance against a center attack. Um, so, okay, I'm going to pick some different opening now. This is weird. Um, 
Now they can push out my bishop's head, sure. And I'm even offering the 5-5 five, five pawn as tribute. Um, but I think I get significant counterplay. Oh, well, all right, here we go. Uh, all right, so they wanted this tempo. I don't understand why this tempo is so valuable. Maybe it is, and I just, there's something I'm not grasping here. All right, they prevent me from pushing the Rook Pawn, which maybe I should have been pushing a dozen different times there. Um, I mean, yes, they got a ton of pressure on this edge, but is that the right way to play this? Or is that a right way to play this? Um, So my bishop's going to stay on this diagonal, and my silver and rook are going to try to attack this side directly. Um, needless to say, I'm a bit nervous about this. Okay... This is strange. <sighs> Should have had my gold up here already. Don't know what to do next. This bishop is too strong. It has to go somewhere else. Maybe moving this gold would have been a more responsible thing to do here. Okay. Maybe this is insane? I don't know. Oh. Yeah, the silver move is insane. Never mind. There's no maybe about that. Um... Hmm. Alright, this is safe, right? This has got to be safe, right? Because we want it to be safe. Um, Ippun Sanjubio.
And simply wanting a thing to be something else makes it reality, right? That's how reality works. All right, we're pushing this pawn. It seems crazy, but uh, what else am I going to do? That hurts. And it hurts only if we let it start hurting. If we just are immune to pain, then does it really hurt? Um, hmm. Yeah, my idea... I have no time to execute on my ideas, which I don't have. So that's kind of an issue. I did foresee this bishop advance. I didn't know what to do about it. So here we are. If the silver retreats, I think I sack the rook. Like, my only hope of any checkmate is if this pawn and some more pieces guide me to victory. I also have to do something crazy like offer up the rook here. It's not enough, but let's pretend it is.
時間切れ<笑> Thanks for the game <sighs> uh, Did the opponent miss a checkmate? Yeah, they probably had a mate Alright, thanks for the game Try to do better next game Good luck How much trouble am I in for doing this? I am idly curious, so... That's interesting. That's interesting. Um... All right, you got my curiosity. Okay, then. This is an opening line? Is that right? You've got me to take your bishop. Um, I lost my audio. Hopefully you can still hear it. Um... All right, so this rook defends this pawn. Hmm. I could exchange rooks and then drop a rook back here, which actually doesn't go anywhere. Or I could just drop back, and I think my position is reasonable here. Yeah, I guess they tricked me into placing my bishop on the board. Uh, wow. Really? Is there something wrong about this position? There's... I'm just not understanding it. Okay. That's really provocative, you know. Um... You got my interest. All right, we're going to see how this goes. How I read this is that I control this rank, and that nothing can defend this except for your knight, and that you probably don't want to move your knight there. And if you push this pawn, I can just take it. Sure, yeah, you can promote, but um, there's multiple things going on here. This looks interesting. Maybe I've just fundamentally misevaluated what's going on since, like, my corner is. They're gonna get a lance, and I'm gonna get their lance eventually. They get my knight. I don't understand this. Looks interesting, though.
That is super weird. Not even immediately trying to capture my lance, but taking the long route to get there. Um... If I take this gold, I could drop it to win the rook, which is kind of weird, except that the rook drop, well, rook drop's not that great afterward, because they can move the land, silver back and it's protected by this bishop. If I simply move the rook away, yeah, they could take my pawn. Um, And I take back. They're playing quite aggressively. I think I'll try to play aggressively also. So I'm guessing rook takes happens next. Nope. I guessed incorrectly. Um... But what are they doing? My silver and gold protect each other. I'm still threatening to promote here. They have a horse. I guess they could move this gold to prevent my promotion. But, like, step by step, their shape gets kind of super odd. But maybe that's fine, because they got a horse. Maybe I misevaluated. Oh. Okay. That sets up tactics that aren't going to happen. Alright, so we promote... The lance is threatened. I have three pawns in hand, if I'm reading that correctly. Yeah. Three pawns is a significant number. It should be able to do something. Um... If I drop a pawn here, that gives them a pawn that they might be able to use. I don't want to use my pawns recklessly here. Um, Alright, I'm threatening a lance drop to win a general. And perhaps some more pieces afterward. I don't know if I should line up my dragon with their king before or after this, but they might do this lining up for me if they try to step into this castle. Um, maybe this would be a good opportunity for me to defend better before I launch a huge attack. Oh. Communication Disorder. This is an interesting game. I hope that we're able to finish it. Um, but maybe I find it interesting because, yeah, I'm doing okay in this position. Uh, that game I will look forward to doing post-game analysis on. There was a lot going on in that game. Uh, thank my opponent for such an interesting game. Alright, two games down, one to go. Let's obtain another proverb. Good luck. Alright, our opponent commits to playing a swinging rook opening. I still don't remember all the move order details here, which seems kind of relevant 
given how important this castle is. Um, Alright, we're gonna move the king. And assume that's fine, but I don't know. It always makes me nervous playing this stuff when I don't know what I'm doing. I've cleared the path in front of my rook. I've hung a piece to a bishop fork, uh, although I get to take here. Um, they have a silver. I've got a knight. This horse is scary. Um, Hmm. Figuring this out on the fly is going to suck a lot. Um. <laughs> Someone fell for the oldest trick in the book, and it probably wasn't my opponent. Alright, so they offer a rook exchange. This position's dire. If I accept the rook exchange, this position sucks even more. Um, so we're going to do the desperate thing and say, nope, no rook exchange for you. Um... Does this hang a piece? This... they might drop a silver forking my knight and rook. Uh... I didn't think about that. Although if I go here, it does get a little tricky. Um... Uh, this is the classic Greek gift. Good to know. Yep, so. But also, I guess if they do this fork, I could step out this way. It's not so easy. Ah, a pin. Okay. Wait, this pin doesn't actually pin anything, because this is check. It does threaten a really scary sacrifice on my king's head, but, you know, given that we're kind of dead already, um, we can only die once, so I'm not that afraid. Um, I promote over here, threatening to take the silver. They've invested a lot of pieces chasing this dragon. Nanafun. I don't know if that's normal. Maybe there's something to be said for falling into opening traps. Um as I guess be prepared on both sides of such a situation would be one thing to say. But yeah, now this bishop's a target. So I might drop 
bishop here threatening this and then drops something to threaten that? I don't know. I've done this sort of thing before where I've tried very hard to surround an opposing rook or an opponent's rook. Um, it doesn't always turn out well. This looks modestly interesting, so let's take a look at it. Oh, somehow I imagined that if this pawn advanced, my bishop was going to reroute. Oh, it is check this way. I did read that correctly. Yeah, pawn up. Okay, so they cut off my bishop this way. Uh, and they also have an attack that's really scary this way. Um, hmm. Okay, I'm going to attack over here, assuming that my attack checkmates them first. It's a naive assumption, but got to start somewhere. Okay. That's clever. I should have seen that and dropped one up, but oh well. Go Um. <laughs> this is the weirdest lance move I've made in a while, but I, reading variations, it seems reasonable enough. And then I can chase this knight down. All right. I missed that variation. It's probably fine. Okay. 
Okay, we're going to attack this way. Because it is a way to attack. Setting up a cheapo eventually. I guess also preventing a bishop drop right there. You mentioned this guy's four down in bullet. That doesn't bode well for my chances. Um, if I'm to get lucky in order to survive this, it's going to take a lot of luck. All right, all right, you get my rook, whatever. Ippun. Guess I have to take that.
Oh, they have a no. They don't have a gold. Never mind. But I'm probably not threatening. Probably not threatening mate myself. Oh, they they took my gold. That's how they got a gold. Very well played. <laughs> All right, that was exciting, wasn't it? So that's three games for today. That's ten minute shogi for you. Um, yeah, every game is a learning experience, even when you win, even when you lose. I feel like from the post game analysis, we're gonna learn more out of these than out of some previous games. So, hopefully, we had fun with these. Thanks for watching.